All right, here in this video, we'll talk about the last section of our group project poster, the abstract. And I've specifically given description for this section last because really what this section is, is a summary of everything else on the poster. So in order to write that, you need to have all the other information on the poster first, and then you can write that summary in the abstract. So for this video, we're focusing on this one section of the poster here as shown in the example template that I gave you. So again, this abstract section is summarizing your whole poster in one little section. So really what you're doing here is giving people the major takeaways from your study. So for example, when I'm at conferences and I'm at poster sessions, again, in non-COVID times when we are in person, what I do is I skim this abstract section of posters as I'm walking through poster sessions to determine if I want to read the whole poster or talk to the presenter. So this is a quick mini section to give a whole summary of your poster to help people understand what your research is about. So in terms of what you should be including here in this section, just like in the previous videos, I'll walk us through that. The first thing you should be including is the overall goal of your study. Here's an example from my poster. So this might look something like the statement where it says this study investigates the balance between selection for local adaptation to heat stress and the rate of interpopulation gene flow in Chlorosoma funebralis, an intertidal snail. So as I talked about in that last introduction video, there's really these competing factors here. The selection that causes local adaptation and gene flow that can make populations more similar and prevent local adaptation from happening. So the goal of this study is to gain a better understanding of the balance between those two opposing forces. Another thing you want to include in the abstract is a brief, that's in capitals, methods. So in your method section, you lay out the full flow chart of things, right? In your abstract, you're summarizing all of that, giving one key sentence or two sentences that are briefly describing the overall methods for your study. So that might look something like this, quote, we use double digest restriction site associated DNA sequencing, that's why it has the acronym DDRAD, to identify and genotype 4,551 SNPs in 15 individuals from each of six populations. So note here that we are giving some details. So we're telling how many different populations we looked at, how many individuals, how many SNPs, but there are some details we aren't giving. So we're not giving any details about DNA extraction, how the SNPs were identified or anything like that. We're focusing here on the main thing. We're summarizing all of that by saying DDRAD sequencing was done and we identified and genotyped SNPs. So it's a brief summary of the methods that were done. Don't go into a bunch of the details. You will provide that in the full method section, which takes up that whole column of your poster, right? So here we're just doing a really brief summary. Speaking of summaries, another thing you want to summarize in your abstract is the most important results. So that might look something like this. This is again an example from my template poster. Results indicate strong genetic differentiation between northern and southern populations. So that's a really brief summary, right? We're not giving any details about which gene so differences or anything like that. We're just saying as a summary, overall, these results indicate there is strong genetic differentiation between these populations. So that's a summary of your results. The other component we want to include here is a brief description of what your results mean in the broader context. Again, so what? Why should someone care about this? This gives me another chance to use this weird little cartoon thing. I don't really know what it is, but I, I like it, so I used it again. So I actually, when I was looking at my template poster, I actually didn't include this information on my poster. So don't copy me in that regard. But if I were to include a statement related to that template poster I provided you where we did, I did DDRAD sequencing looking at 
different geographic populations of the black turban snail, I might say something like this, quote, identifying temperature-related adaptive loci between northern and southern California C. funebralis populations can help us predict future local extinctions of populations due to climate change. So this right here is that so what? So the results are that we had genetic differentiation, that we identified adaptive loci. The so what is what we can do with the information and how it can help inform conservation or management. So in this case, it can help us determine whether different populations are under threat of going locally extinct, of dying out in those areas due to warming temperatures from climate change. So here's the example from my template poster. It's a relatively small, short section, about a third of a column. You might note here that I've used bullet points. That's not required. I really only actually did that for this poster. I don't usually use bullet points in the abstract of my poster. Just to point that out, if it makes sense for your group and you want to do that, you can, but it's not required. So how do we go about writing this abstract last section of our poster, which is really a summary of everything? Well, really we want to break it down into those main different components we want to include, identify each of those, and then put it all together. So the first thing I would recommend doing to identify the goal for your study is go back to your knowledge gap. So we talked about this a little bit before, but think about what you're trying to accomplish with your study. Why is it important? What type of gap are you trying to fill? What new information will your results provide? Next, you want to summarize the methods. So again, this is the full picture of what the methods look like. Condense that down into one or two sentences. So overall, what was done, just put that key information in the abstract. Next, you want to summarize the results. So again, take that whole one column section. What is the main takeaway? What is the main result that you found? And then in addition to just stating the results themselves, think about what the key takeaway is from the conclusion section. So the takeaway again is that so what? So you can think about it like an elevator pitch, if you've heard of that. An elevator pitch is something people talk about where if you only had 15 or 30 seconds with another person, what would you want to make sure you convey to them in that very limited amount of time? So if you're thinking about what do you want people who read your poster or talk to you about your work, what's the one thing that you want them to walk away understanding about why your work is important, what's the main thing you found? So think about for your conclusion section, that's where before we've talked about thinking about what the broader implications of your work are. So from that section, identify the key takeaway and you can include that in your abstract. And now that you've identified those four different pieces, put them all together, write your text, and there you have your abstract. So overall, regarding length, your abstract should be about 115 words. This is a general guideline, about five sentences. So in general, sentences, okay. In general, the abstract and introduction section should be roughly about the same length. And again, that abstract should take up about a third of a column on your poster. So that's it. Once you have completed the abstract section, you have your full poster. So what your group can do, put all that together, turn in a draft. I'll give you feedback on that. We'll do some peer reviews and give you a chance to revise as appropriate before we do the final version and present it during our poster session.